Now, here to end off our afternoon, we'd like to, of course, give the stage to some voices, not just any ordinary voices, rather. These are young goalkeepers, and I'm really excited to hear what they have to say. Now, they are often not only just younger, but also wiser and more determined than the generation before. So please, first, allow me to welcome to the stage Alexandria Villasenor. Alexandria will be 25 in 2030. My name is Alexandra Villasenor. I'm a climate activist and I'm 14. Scientists tell us that we are running out of time to take action against the climate crisis. In fact, we have been told we have less than 11 years to reduce greenhouse gas emissions globally by half, or else we face significant, irreversible, catastrophic consequences of climate change. I am a climate activist because that timeline ends when I am only 25 years old. The climate crisis will affect my generation the most. At the end of last year, I was visiting my family back in California when the campfires broke out. It was scary because it was the worst air quality in the world and we had to roll up wet towels and put them under the doors to stop the smoke from coming in. I was lucky, my family were lucky, but many others weren't. Once I got back home to New York City, I started researching what's happening in the atmosphere. And through that process, I came across Greta Thunberg. I'm now an international organizer for Fridays for Future. I strike school every Friday in front of the United Nations headquarters in solidarity with Greta and the Fridays for Future movement. I have also founded my own nonprofit, Earth Uprising International, focused on getting climate education into school and mobilizing students to take direct action for their futures. In 2020, I am committed to grow the movement of young people taking climate action for our futures and to empowering young people to share the knowledge of climate science with others. I am committed to continuing to be a better keeper of goal 13. Please welcome my fellow goalkeeper, Elvis Eze, and hear his story. He will be 38 in 2030. Hello, my name is Elvis. I am an emergency medicine doctor during my hospital shift and a health advocate all day, every day. I am a youth ambassador for Malaria No More UK, helping to mobilize funding and support to end malaria in my lifetime. A child dies from malaria every two minutes. I have battled malaria myself, both as a patient and as a physician. I know too well how illnesses can rob us of our potential, productivity, and peace. The biggest challenges are the normalization of the disease in affected populations and limited resources in the worst affected areas. I have seen beyond data and statistics. I have seen death and suffering from the disease. I am certain we can do so much better for our world. I have now found my voice against the disease and I can see how much progress is possible. 2020 is the most important year and I commit to continuing to advocate for action and accountability through all available platforms and researching solutions for malaria elimination, particularly in relation to humanitarian emergencies and climate change. I am committed to continuing to be a better keeper of goal three. This is my story. My name is Gwondoan. 
I'm a vocal advocate for accessible and effective mental health care. Depression is a major pervasive health issue in China today. But stigma is still significant in our culture, with many barriers to receiving treatment and support. In China, less than 6% of people get treated in 2026. Also, the lack of understanding and the lack of professional and accurate information in our public media means that those people are left untreated and invisible. As a journalist for many years, I know exactly how important to telling the real life story and the necessary to communicate with them. This topic is also I have something I have personal investment in, as I have suffered from depression for many years. I accurately recognize the importance of speaking out mental health issues, fighting the stigma, educating the public, and advocating for the policies that support people. Even today, I'm still building my courage to the point where I will feel comfortable to tell my parents about my disease. This secrecy must stop. In 2020, I'm committed to continue advocating for mental health issues and helping our country to integrate mental health into general health. I'm committed to be continued to be a better keeper of goal three. This is my story. We are committed to come together in 2020 for a super year of action. Individually and together, we will seize local, regional, and global opportunities to the fight against poverty, inequality, gender injustice, and for good health services, the defeat to defeat of climate change. This is our message. This is our promise. And together, we must keep the goals. 2020 is the year to make a change with urgency through bold partnerships to increase our ambition and change our path together. So, in one year, on September 25th, 2020, we will commit to come together for a global day of action. And we will call on all our world leaders to come back to the United Nations and report on what have been done to advance prospect and equality, an opportunity for all. Together, we will keep the goals. It's time to stand together and to act for people and for planet. Well done, Alexandria, Elvis, and uh, of course, Duan Duan. If there's one thing, I don't know if you caught it, and I'm just saying that they introduced basically goal number 18, which is fighting against age shaming. <laughs> I'm proud of you. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been amazing. Thank you for joining us.